So am I comfortable? Am I securely rich? You're damn right I am. <laughs> and could other people be just as comfortable as I am? I didn't have a vast portfolio with a lot of names in it. Many of whom neither they nor their understand or their advisors understand. Of course they'd be better off if they did work. Investing is no doubt the surest way to build sustainable wealth. Stock investments is how billionaires like Charlie Munger achieved their $2 billion net worth. And so if you're looking for something more out of your $1,000, then this is the most rewarding way for you. However, your reward will depend on one major condition. Is your $1,000 a single or reoccurring investment? You see, although $1,000 may seem like a lot to invest, your rewards may not be so good if you're investing just once in the stock market. So if you have just $1,000 to invest with no chance of adding more money in the future, then the stock market may not be the best idea. Consider this scenario. Let's say you invest $1,000 in stocks and luckily you get a return of 25% that year, which is very unlikely in the stock market your return would be just $250. You'd agree that $250 you can't do much with these days given inflation and GDP depression. It would have been a lot better if your investment was bigger, say $100,000 or more. But then you'd be taking an even greater risk. Some people might suggest CDs as a risk-free way of investing money. But even CDs won't do much in this case. Just so you know, CDs are kind of like regular savings accounts. The only thing is your money is locked up for a set period of time, so you can't withdraw it unless you're willing to pay a huge fine. As of August 2023, the average return on five year CDs is about 1.37%. And so with your $1,000, you'll only end up making $1,068 after five years. Imagine waiting for such a long time only to make $68. It's not really worth it, right? Typically, the average return on investment in the stock market is about 5 to 7%. If you had picked this option instead of a CD, you'd have ended up with around $1,400 in five years for a 7% ROI. That's a much more decent amount of money, but it's still not enough to change your life. And so you might wonder, what is the best way to invest my $1,000 then? Well, I'll show you how. You see, investment is a game of numbers. And so rather than just putting your $1,000 into something for it to grow over time, you should find a way to generate more income so you can invest more and earn more. This is why it would be best to invest in yourself first before trying to invest in the stock market or any other investment options buy a book anymore. When I was young, I used to order them from the book review columns of the New York Times. And now that it's torrent of books comes in, I just select what I want. <laughs> and I'm amazed at how well some of these people are reading me. And what, and, has, and what has that done to your life, I think? Uh, well, it, it's, it, it was perfect for me. I don't think you can take every bookish little boy and turn him into a billionaire by patting him on the head and say, read all you want, Johnny. But if it were that easy, there'd be more billionaires. But, but it, it enormously helps. So how do you invest in yourself? Well, there are a couple of ways to do so. You can learn a new skill, read books on wealth creation, take a course, or simply set up a side business to bring in more income for yourself other than your main job. The key here is to add more value to yourself. The more valuable you are, the more money-making opportunities you'll get and the more your demand from the market. Ultimately, you'll be making more money. There are countless skills out there that you can learn, some of which can start bringing you more income right after learning them. For instance, coding, digital marketing, and AI prompting are just a few of the hot skills out there right now. Just pick one that interests you and seems promising and get serious with it. Your $1,000 will be more than enough to finance your learning of these skills, so you can use the rest to promote your skill or service online. Charlie Munger greatly holds personal development in high esteem, which is why, even in his old age, he still reads a lot. It's like they say, readers are leaders. One of Charlie's most famous quotes is, strive to become wiser every day. The more you learn, the more you grow, and the more you grow, 
the more your money and happiness will grow. These are the words of a billionaire. So there you have it. Remember, you're trying to get knowledge to make you more productive and sought after in the market. So don't just spend your $1,000 buying random books or courses. Have a target in mind. The ultimate goal is to generate another income source. So if reading books isn't your thing, then just try using that $1,000 to develop a side hustle or business. Thanks to the internet, this is all so easy these days. You can start blogging, affiliate marketing, drop shipping, or any other kind of business that doesn't require too much capital initially. Remember, you can always outsource most of your work to freelancers. That way, you can focus on your job while your business runs on autopilot. Over time, your business will grow, earning profits beyond $1,000. You can now invest this money into the stock market for better returns. This leads us to our next scenario, where you have $1,000 now and you're sure of a consistent cash flow from your business or side hustle that'll allow you to invest more money in the coming months. In other words, you're trying to turn your active income into a more profitable passive income. The easiest way to do this is through the stock market. Stock market investing is all about buying shares of companies you feel have the potential to do well in the future. It could be Microsoft, Apple, Tesla, or whatever company you choose. Typically, buying these shares means you're now an owner of a tiny part of the company. If the company grows as a whole, so too do your investments grow. But if the company goes down, so will you. A company's growth or decline will pay out in stock prices as well as in dividends. You can always use these to determine the company's financial status, but you shouldn't put all of your money in one company. Rather, you should invest in index funds. You see, index funds have a catalog of some of the well-performing company stocks. So when you invest in these funds, you're investing in all the companies they feature. This helps lower the risk of losing all your money if one of those companies goes down. For instance, let's say you bought an index fund featuring Apple. If in the coming weeks, Apple releases a new iPhone with a bad OS, customers may feel displeased and present lawsuits. Consequently, Apple will lose money, stock prices will go down, and investors will pull out from the company, making it go broke. If you had invested in Apple directly, all your money would have gone completely. But since you've invested in an index fund, your losses will be balanced up with the profits from another company. So at the end of the day, you'll only have gains and no losses. Index funds save you the trouble of analyzing companies to ascertain which ones would be performing well in the coming years. Index funds come in different kinds. Funds like the S&P 500 allow you to invest in the general market, while dividend index funds allow you to invest in companies that give out dividends to investors. Before investing in an index fund, you'll still need to conduct background checks to see if the companies in that index fund are those you'd like to invest in. Never invest blindly. And here's another thing you should know about index funds. There's no guarantee you'll make money. Remember, at the end of the day, we're still dealing with the stock market, which has proven to be very unpredictable. But still, it's like they say, no risk, no reward. If you fancy investing in an index fund but are confused about where to start, here are some examples for you. For investing in general market stocks, you can check out index funds like VOO and SPY. These funds feature the top performing 500 companies in the United States at any given time. So you can be sure you're investing in the best companies at that time. If you love tech companies like Microsoft, Google and Facebook, you can invest in the tech market with funds like VGT or QQQ. For dividend funds, you can check out VYM or SDY. These funds provide you with an opportunity for risk-free dividend investing. Dividend investing is when you invest in a company that gives you a share of the profits every year, besides the stocks you already own. This kind of investing can be lucrative. You can either enjoy your dividends or reinvest them into the company for even more gains. If stock markets aren't your thing, but you'd still like to earn passive income from your $1,000, then you should try investing in real estate. Now, I know $1,000 is too small to buy a house, but you see, 
it's not too small to use on other real estate investment methods like crowdfunding and REITs. Crowdfunding platforms pull money from different investors like you to purchase real estate. As the property value goes up, you make profits. REITs are companies that own real estate and allow investors to own their company stocks. It's simply investing in a company that invests in real estate. Two great REIT examples are VNQ and USRT. We both had a fair amount of experience in real estate and Charlie made his early money in real estate. Uh, the second point is the more important point. It's not, real estate is not a commodity, but it, I think it tends to be more accurately priced, particularly developed real estate, more accurately priced most of the time. One thing to know about real estate investing, however, is that it isn't as easy to sell off your investments for profit as you would typically do with stocks. Most REITs and crowdfunding platforms offer passive income as dividends and offer long-term gains. So don't expect to pull out your money anytime you like. However, the gains from these companies can be really high since they're mandated to give 90% of their profits to investors. Investing may seem easy, but it actually requires a lot of discipline. So here's the final tip. Set up a system where a percentage of your income is automatically diverted into your stock trading account. This will ensure consistency and eliminate the temptation of spending money you should have saved or invested. However, whatever you do, never fail to invest in more knowledge. You never know what great opportunities you may be missing out on. And if you don't just feel like investing, use it to pay off your debt early. It'll help secure your future financially. There were a lot of questions today, people trying to figure out what the secret to life is, to a long and happy life. And, and I just wonder if you were... Now that is easy because it's so simple. What you is it? You don't have a lot of envy, you don't have a lot of resentment, you don't overspend your income, you stay cheerful in spite of your troubles. You deal with reliable people and you do what you're supposed to do. And all these simple rules work so well to make your life better.